Welcome back to Ray Ray's Corner. So today we're going to talk about um, vomiting and nausea and some issues that I've had pre and post gallbladder removal. Uh, so about two or so years ago I had some gallbladder pain start up. Uh, it started with nausea, vomiting, and this pain that just wouldn't go away in my lower right hand side abdominal area and it just wouldn't go away and it gradually got worse and worse and so did the nausea and vomiting and over time I was eating and drinking less food because my appetite just wasn't there and every time I ate or drank I would just start throwing up or feeling so nauseous that I couldn't, you know, keep my keep my composure. And what I thought was maybe happening was, you know, some gallbladder pain. I considered, you know, maybe it was something to do with appendicitis, but no, <laughs> that would be much worse, probably more quickly onset, and it would be in a completely different location. And so I went to see my doctor and we had a lot of tests done and by the end of the summer um, I had been to, um, I was on vacation and I ended up going to the emergency room there and being told that I had some gallstones and some gall sludge. Um, and while I was at that uh, that are in that emergency room, essentially for that past week or so, my appetite had just gone down and down and I'd hardly eaten or drank anything, hardly been able to. Um, and by the time we got home from vacation, I think it was a day or two later, um, I was pretty much back in the emergency room again. You know, I just was not able to eat or drink and I was feeling awful and my heart was racing and the pain was getting worse. And essentially they checked my blood sugar and they checked all my levels. They did a bunch of blood work, a bunch of tests, an ultrasound. They did, you know, some x-rays and they told me that there weren't gallst gallstones or gall sludge. Um, but that, you know, I had this extremely low blood sugar. It was one point something. And so I was put up in, um, in a room and I was told I was probably gonna have to be there for a bit. And, um, you know, I went through the whole process of <laughs> in the middle of the night, you know, everyone's turning on lights and there's sleeping patients around you and you know you're thinking oh my gosh what am I gonna do you know this really hurts and I feel so nauseous and I I think it was about a week or so and in, in the hospital before I was able to eat um, but they actually did a um, a procedure they went to check uh, do take some samples in, uh, I'm not sure if it was my esophagus or my stomach, um, and they gave me the um, medicine to make me sleepy, and then told me, you know, gave me the paperwork, and then right kind of at the end of that, you know, they said, oh, and we're going to give you um, a feeding tube, and I thought, hmm. <laughs> You give someone the paperwork, you get them to sign it, while they're loopy, and then you suddenly tell them they're going to get a feeding tube, which was something that had not been discussed before the procedure. Uh, I came out of it, I was in a lot of pain, um, and I ended up having the feeding tube taken out because I was in more pain than what the gallbladder was causing. So we had that taken out, um, and during the next, I don't even remember how many days, I feel like it was, oh, about two and a half weeks or so, uh, or around two weeks, 
but uh, essentially they did a long battery of tests. There were some tests they couldn't do until I could eat food um, and drink liquids. And um, essentially that was a test to see how my gallbladder functioned. Um, when they finally did, did that test, it determined that I had no um, problems with my gallbladder. It was functioning perfectly. And I said, that's not right. <laughs> you know, there's something going on. You know, I've had all this trouble eating and drinking with the pain. And they kept telling me, all oh, your tests are coming back fine. You're all good to go. But they still said, you know, you're still going to be in here probably for a couple more weeks. And, but I, I couldn't really take it anymore. So they let me go home because, you know, I was a little bit miserable, but um, they had me speak with a surgeon who had me, um, who was going to take out my gallbladder. He said, this is a voluntary procedure. And I said, not really voluntary, but okay. You know, if it gets rid of the pain, okay. And lo and behold, they took it out. You know, the gallbladder pain just dropped away. And I still had the vomiting and nausea. <laughs> it was less, but when I went back later to the doctor, he said that my gallbladder had been completely deceased. Like, it was dead. Um, and I just felt kind of a, a sense of relief because I was right. <laughs> I knew there was something wrong with my gallbladder. And every time the doctors kept telling me that it was perfect, there was nothing wrong with it, you know, I, I, <laughs> I understood that yes, they're doctors, but there's a point, you know, they, they should really listen to you and after they told me that I had been right all along I, I just felt you know sigh of relief but after my gallbladder surgery I had about three weeks where you know you know after the pain had started drifting away um, and the, the nausea and vomiting you know it was lessening after the three weeks all of a sudden the nausea and vomiting came back with a vengeance. Uh, food, I was having just so much trouble with it. I ended up having to switch between foods. You know, I'd, one food would be kind of okay for a couple weeks and then I'd have to switch foods and then switch foods a couple weeks later. And finally in, I think it was January, no, January. Oh gosh, it's been so long. <laughs> Um, in January, I think it was, um, I, I think it was the 4th of January or the 8th, sometime around there, um, of this year, I started, uh, not being able to keep down food or drinks. Like I, I didn't have, I called it the, you know, <laughs> not a day without vomiting. And until the last couple months, I hadn't had a single day without vomiting the whole year and a, a bit, you know, a year and a bit. And um, that was that was completely ridiculous. You know, the, some people had thrown around the word cyclic vomiting syndrome, but nobody would diagnose me with it. You know, uh, so, so essentially I have chronic pretty much daily vomiting and I have to switch up my food here and there. I find, you know, not eating meat, for example, makes it better. Um, and, you know, vegetables are really a bad thing. Vegetables and um, fruit, not the best foods to be consuming. Uh, actually, at the moment, I've started doing meal replacement shakes again. Um, and while all the flavors are not great on their own, I put in a little bit of sugar-free, zero-calorie Tarani syrup, and that helps the flavor a lot. So now it's, it's like having dessert for every meal, <laughs> but, um, they help keep my stomach calm. And basically, 
yes, it's made things quite difficult um, having all of this chronic vomiting and the chronic nausea, um, you know, and it means that, say, if I take, I normally take my medication laying down at night, but if I take it sitting up, I can't lay down for at least a half an hour, sometimes up to an hour, where I'll throw out my medication. Um, two nights this week, I actually, I accidentally did that. <laughs> And for the first time in months and so I had two days in a row where you know my medication came up and the flavor that of the medication you know the taste is so bad that it just makes you more and more sick um, and then it kind of ruins your week a little bit <laughs> but I, uh, I still got a lot of things done this week despite that and yes it kind of you know, maybe more exhausting because I didn't really get to sleep and, you know, the facial pain came back because the cymbalta obviously was out of my body. Um, it, I didn't get two days worth of doses of it, but, you know, I'm back on track and I'm being very careful about when, I, when and where I take my medications and because of the knee replacement shakes, you know, my stomach is just gradually getting better. Um, anyhow, sorry for all of the disgusting nausea and vomiting talk today. Um, next time I'm hoping to talk about a little bit more of a topic that I'm sure a few more of you can relate to. So I'll see you next time right here in Ray Ray's Corner and bye bye.